morning guys and welcome to the Human Golf Show. Today is pretty exciting. We're going to do another club review. We're going to do the SM10, the new SM10 launch. We had TrueFit Copper Leaf today and we're going to go through the testing. It's new. They've got some new additions to the family and pretty excited to give this a test today. So what we're going to do, we're going to just go through a little bit of um, the technology based stuff today and then afterwards we're just going to head to the chipping green talk about bounces, the lofts, the importance of a wedge fitting, etc. The crucial thing about wedge fittings is there's so many different variations in um, wedges. You've got the bounces, um, you have the different loft options, and it's quite a complex, complicated thing to actually understand. So I wanna, we're doing this video just to try explain everything to you guys from a simple format um, so that you guys can actually make a better decision with regards to the wedges. There's three keys to great wedge play. Okay, there's shot versatility, so around the greens, three quarter shots, full shots, distance is important, trajectory and control is important, and then obviously spin, maximize spin is really, really important. The SM10s have got the three different finishes. They've got the trusty tour chrome, which is very popular, you see it on TV a lot. The new addition to the family is the nickel. I think I might put this into my bag. I like the look and finish to this. It's very clean, it's very sleek. I think they've done this because of the glare that they have with the Tour Chrome. You know, if you're standing in bunkers, etc., there's, you get that glare from the Tour Chrome. So it's a nice little in-between. And then we have the Jet Black. So obviously a lot more darker finish, uh, very clean, and we'll go through the different finishes around the chipping green and bunkers shortly, and we'll have a look at the different finishes. But three different finishes. Tour Chrome, Nickel, and Jet Black. Giveaway time, guys. One lucky subscriber can win three SM10 wedges, which is very, very cool and exciting. The criteria is subscribe to us on YouTube, tag three friends on Instagram, follow us on Instagram, and like us on Facebook. Very, very simple. And the cool thing about the giveaway is the one lucky winner is actually gonna come for a wedge fitting with us and go through the different um, wedges, bounces, loft options, etc. So very, very exciting, and may the lucky person win. New addition to the Vokies. Vokies have created an online wedge selector tool before coming for a fitting. So it gives you an explanation of the different lofts, the different grinds, the different bounces, and that just helps you understand um, from the wedge selector. So it's gonna ask you a couple of basic questions on shot, uh, different shot types, uh, patterns etc and it's a really really cool platform I think to to get an understanding of what you need if you don't have time to come for a fitting then that tool is there for you guys and I think that's really cool from Titleist I think it's going to do um, a lot of benefits for you guys and we'll put the link below just to give you an example of of the tool selector one new thing that the sm10s have also done is um, they've got different profiles from the pitching wedge to the gap wedge it's a lot more slimmer it matches your iron set a lot better they've narrowed and slimmed down the the pitching wedge and gap wedge option just to fit into your set a bit and then they've obviously progressed it from the sand wedge to the lob wedge and made it a little bit bigger for shot uh, versatility um, and around the green performance. So that's pretty cool. The one thing that they've changed is the sense of gravity in the face. The sense of gravity has changed progressively with the wedge. We'll explain the sense of gravity change, but a lot of the tour pros that play Titleist have had their input in the new wedges, which I also like a lot. A cool story, uh, Jordan Spieth, um, with regards to his wedges, if he had a full shot to a back left flag, he tend to pull it a little bit because of the sense of gravity being mostly in the heel. And that just creates a little draw bias tendencies. From feedback from Jordan Spieth and some tour pros, they've actually shifted the sense of gravity towards the middle of the club face to make it like a neutral bias club so that they can actually throw darts at flags when they've got wedges. And I think that's a huge, crucial, important thing that they've changed, especially from a performance perspective. You know, when you have a wedge in your hand, you really want to go, go at the flag. You don't want to go play middle green and you want to go make birdies. So that's a really, really uh, cool story that I like to hear. And yet again, the tour player feedback from the testing um, has been crucial for the SM10. With the result, I think the change has been crucial. The Vokies have got something called the TX9 grooves. Okay, so it's a painted spin mill process. Okay, so they've individually cut based on this, the loft and the finish. Okay, so 
and it follows a heat treatment so that the wedges and the grooves can last longer and they've obviously patented it and every wedge goes through a 100% inspection. There's a lot of tech involved and you can just see there's a lot of precision that's involved with making these wedges. So it's pretty exciting. The TX9 grooves, okay, so they've got two different groove patterns. Okay, so between the 46 and the 54 um, degree, uh, they've got a narrower, deeper groove. Okay, and then between the 56 and the 62, they've got a wider and shallower groove. And obviously they've done that because of the full shot and versatility around the greens, and they've had to make those changes due to the performance of the longer clubs to the shorter clubs, and that's quite cru uh, crucial. It just obviously helps with launch angle, uh, different spin rates, and I think it's just cutting edge technology, to be honest. We're at the Chipping Green. We're gonna go, uh, go through a couple of shots and a couple of different wedges, talk about bounce a little bit, loft, etc., and just explain the fundamentals of bounce and loft options. Before we start with that, I just wanna go through a couple of things that I see with regards to fittings on a daily basis. So the one crucial a uh, aspect or element um, in your golf bag with regards to your wedges is the loft. Um, I see a lot of guys coming into my store that's got a 43 or 44 uh, degree pitching wedge and they've got a 52, 56 and 60 option which obviously by that gap is too big from your, gap we uh, from your pitching wedge to your gap wedge. So the one key element that we need to talk about is that you know your lofts of your pitching wedge so that you can actually marry the gapping and the lofts between your pitching wedge, gap wedge, sand wedge, and lob wedge. I think that's a first start that we should talk about. Secondly, bounce is quite a complicated thing uh, to understand. So I'm gonna keep it very simple for you guys um, to understand. So you obviously got a low bounce, which you get the four, the eight uh, option. And then obviously the higher bounce, you can get, you can start from the eight, 10, 12, and 14. And it's pretty simple, simple with regards to the bounce. So if you have a very shallow pattern, and you almost like haircut or clip the grass, obviously the lower bounce would be a, a better option for you with regards to uh, chipping and bunker shots. And if you have quite a steep pattern, I wouldn't say over the top pattern, but a steeper pattern, um, then obviously the higher bounce is gonna give you relief in the sole. So that's that in a nutshell, pretty simple. We can obviously go into brief explanation in the fitting. Obviously the bigger, the higher the bounce is, the thicker the sole at the back for, for, for some relief. With regards to the lower bounces, it's a little bit more um, shallow and narrow. It's very, very crucial to choose your wedges around the green. Specifically, if you have a, a problematic area around the green, whether it's you know being around the green with the short chips, or you know the fluffy lies or the hard pan lies i would advise selecting your wedge based on the problematic areas right so going back to that obviously with a higher bounce with soft fairways thick fairways thick rough etc the higher bounce is obviously going to do the trick for you guys and then if you're playing on hard pan lush fairways uh, very very closely mown uh, fairways um, the lower bounce is going to obviously um, help with that area. But the crucial element to picking the right wedges and the fitting is around the greens. So I can't express enough that selecting your wedge around the greens, feeling the turf interaction, is very, very crucial. Yes, you can select it uh, based on you know, previous experience and stuff like that, and that's also fine. Um, but if you have wedge problems around the green, then you know doing this exercise is really really crucial because then you can actually feel the experience and it'll actually be very easy to select your wedge so right now i have my wedge it's the 60 t grind which is the four bounce i've got a very shallow uh, chipping angle the chipping green has actually been uh, watered right now so that's quite cool because you know i'm very shallow so let's have a look at the interaction between um, the wedge and the turf and get a couple of shots in and then i'll start spicing it up with the different bounces etc let's give a couple of chips a go yeah
So as you can see, I've got quite a shallow angle into the shot. Um, if I play with something, oh, if I play with something higher bounce, it actually bounces off the turf and I must strike it all over the face and it's very, very uh, inconsistent for me. So I like the 6004. I'm going to run through all of them now, but this is something that I really, really like. I hope that was on camera. <laughs> I hope that explains the lower bounce option. Okay, so that's the 6004. I'm gonna go to the extreme and go to the 6012, which is the D grind. A lot more bounce. Um, as I said, the range has been watered now, so it actually might be okay for this right now. And I'll hit a couple of different shafts just to get the feel. That contact's actually really, really good. I'm not gonna lie. As you can see with that reaction to the ball, you can see the bounce actually created less spin on that, on that shot there. It was struck quite nicely, but I could just feel the bounce kicking, kicking in the turf a little bit there. Not bad, but just something that I don't like. So as you can see by the reaction to that, I'll go back to the 6004. As you can see by the reaction of that spin, it's just a lot better for me. And like I said, I'm very, very shallow. I like clipping the grass a lot. I don't like getting steep on it because I just don't want the club to dig. As you can see there, the minute you get steep, uh, steep with it, um, it's just gonna dig. So for people that have problems with the leading edge digging into the turf, obviously the higher bounce is gonna give you relief around the greens. So that's just an indication for you guys to make a decision with regards to the wedge but I can't express enough how important a wedge fitting is. I mean, as you can see here with all the wedges we have here, there are very, there's a lot of options uh, to pick from and it gets actually overwhelming. So if you come for a fitting here, true fit, you can obviously go through the different uh, lofts and the different grinds and experience everything around the greens. Let's try and make one more um, and then we can head over to the bunkers. And just to spice it up with a little different chip here. Oh. <laughs> Would have loved to make that. We're in the bunker at the moment and another quick explanation with regards to different bounces with regards to bunker shots. So yet again, I'm back at my 6004. It's what I like to play with. I've got quite an aggressive action to my bunker shots. I don't like to rely on the bounce so much. I, I like to just get aggressive on it. And then if you had to go opposite to that. So if you're quite tentative and, and nervous in the bunkers, the higher bounce option is gonna actually bounce off the sand a lot more and help that ball get up out of the, out of, out of the sand onto the green. Um, so I'll give you a couple of action shots with regards to that and we'll, you know, discuss it as we go. Okay, so obviously with, with my 604, I need to get very aggressive on it because uh, it's obviously got lower bounce and then I chunk it. So that is a very, very good example for the bounce option, not for myself personally, for my ego but I got very steep on that, deaccelerated, and you could see the lower bounce actually dug the sand. So that's a very good explana explanation um, with regards to the lower bounce. So if you have a tendency to deaccelerate and you know, you're gonna get results like that. Um, so I would advise going into a higher bounce because then obviously the higher bounce is gonna um, save the bunker shot with regards to the deacceleration and actually bounce through the sand and not dig. So let's give that a go again. There we go. So you can see that was a lot more accelerated through. The other thing that I've just done now is I've raked the bunker. So earlier when I was warming up, um, it was very, very firm. 
um, as you can see over here. And let me actually do that. You'll see firm, firm bunker shot with the lower bounce is obviously going to be a lot easier. So if you had a golf course with firm bunkers, then I would definitely go for the lower bounce. Remember, you've got to select your wedges based on personal um, golf courses that you play um, and the type of sand that you're at. See, that's better. So you can see, maybe I should just make sure I'm in firm bunkers more often, but very, very good reference point to understanding the different bounces between firm sand and soft sand. And there was no sand there, but that's fine. Got the 6012, and just guys remember, there's a lot of different options. I'm just trying to go from one extreme to the other. Softer sand, higher bounce, and the reaction actually should be a lot better. Okay, so action's a lot better. Let's go to the firmer side. And in theory, I'm not changing my technique. I'm keeping it very consistent, but this should react a lot worse for me being quite firm right now. You can see how that just bounces, shoots a lot further, but that's the difference between the relief between the higher bounce and the lower bounce. Right guys, that concludes um, the wedge fitting. I hope that helps a little bit. It was very brief, very short and sweet. I just wanted to give you guys a brief understanding. Obviously, if you want to go through the experience, you can come to TrueFit at Copperleaf or to any TrueFit, go through the wedge fitting process. And we use TrackMan, FlightScope. We've got full shot uh, facilities. We've got the hitting mats, obviously, for fuller shots. And then we've got bunkers um, and chipping greens around our facilities. So just remember, this is a cru crucial element. Um, to choosing your wedges. I hope this helps and remember guys like and subscribe. Cheers